One diagnosis offered for why it appears impossible to halt the regress of justification and provide therefore an adequate justification for believing whatever it is we believe is that we are assuming falsely that we must be able to grasp within our minds everything that is involved in making us justified in believing what we do. Some philosophers think that that is just a completely unreasonable assumption. Why, they ask, isn't it enough that there be some reliable connection between our evidence collecting and belief forming mechanisms for us to count as having knowledge? This philosophical approach is known as epistemological reliabilism. A reliable belief forming mechanism is one that yields mostly true beliefs as opposed to false ones. I know a proposition to be true when my belief is produced by a reliable mechanism. Whether I understand how the mechanism works or not is irrelevant. The reliabilist will say, for example, that tossing a coin is not a reliable way of forming beliefs. There is, after all, an equal probability that I will get the answer wrong as often as I get it right. By contrast, making observations under ordinary perceptual conditions is a generally reliable way of forming beliefs about the world around us. So why not take such beliefs as basic evidence for other beliefs without demanding further justification? The problem, as noted first by Edmund Gettier, is that it's relatively easy to construct counterexamples to the definition of knowledge as justified true belief that undermine the idea that a reliable belief forming mechanism operating normally is sufficient to produce knowledge. Consider the dilemma Dave faces when he forms a justified and true belief about whether or not there are ducks in the lake. The problem is that there is nothing wrong with Dave's evidence gathering mechanisms. His perceptual and cognitive faculties are operating at peak performance levels and yet we don't want to count him as having knowledge. So-called Gettier cases are counterexamples to the justified true belief reliableist theories of knowledge because they feature a true belief produced by reliable belief forming mechanisms that does not however count as knowledge. What prevents Dave's having knowledge is the fact that his beliefs being true depends on an element of epistemic luck. And something as important as knowledge shouldn't depend on luck. You might think that the way around this problem is to make it a necessary condition for knowledge that there be no luck involved in the process. But this is contentious. The detective who stumbles by chance upon a piece of evidence which enables her to crack the case shouldn't be denied knowledge just because of this piece of luck. What we want to exclude are the wrong kinds of luck. But when is a piece of luck the wrong kind? The kind that means that you're not justified in believing what you believe. There's no easy way of identifying a piece of luck as of the wrong sort, unless we already have decided that a case doesn't count as a case of knowing. But then we cannot use our identification of a piece of luck as of the wrong sort to explain why the case does not count as knowledge. If we did that, we would be relying on a circular argument, and that's fallacious.